Now I would like to introduce to you Matt Scoble. Think less, move more. <laughs> The mic is working. All right, I'm told I can actually move down here. I think I'm okay. Um, so I want to talk first of all about the first 27 years of my life. And outside of a probably the shortest lived professional basketball team in Canada history, uh, most of the first 27 years of my life were lived up here in my head. Uh, many great ideas that I, at least I thought I had were, were born in my head, they lived in my head, and they died in my head. I, I would say I was probably, you know, pretty much an overthinker. I would um, come up with an idea, I'd look at all the angles, I'd find ways that it wouldn't work, I'd find reasons it wouldn't work, and then the idea would die. So what changed for me? So I had one of these ideas in Ottawa in 2008, or two years ago, sorry. And the idea was I was working as an Apple consultant at the time, and one of the things I noticed about the businesses that we worked with was that many of them had used Macs, and those Macs really couldn't have a new home. They didn't have anywhere to bring them. So because many of the, the recyclers didn't actually know how to use Macs, they didn't have the parts, they would sit in people's basements, they wouldn't be used. So on the other side of the world, my sister Renee was in Kenya, and she was working at an orphanage of 40 children that had, you know, their parents uh, abandoned them or you know, lost their parents due to AIDS. And I thought about it and I said, you know, I talked to her over the phone, I said, you know, how can I help you, what can I do? And she said to me, she said, probably the most important thing for these kids is for them to be given the same opportunity that you had when you were growing up. So when I was growing up, my father brought home into my house an old 486 PC. And he put it in the basement. He didn't tell me how to use it. He didn't tell me what to do. He just put it there. And I had the opportunity to learn and use it. And it became a big part of my professional development and a big part of my career as I got older. So I had this idea. I said, I'm going to get these computers and I'm going to bring them to Africa and I'm going to set up a computer lab. So I thought about how am I going to go about doing this, and then I think if you guys have seen, or if I talked at Ignite, and I used the example of Martin Luther King's speech, and a very famous speech, and I said, what would happen if he went up there and said, I have a plan? It wouldn't have had the same impact. And you think about the wording and what he used when he said he had a dream, and I thought, you know, there's definitely, there's something to this. So I went into work with a dream instead of a plan. We had a bunch of computers that were sitting on the floor at our office, and I said, those computers are going to an orphanage in Kenya. And I got all the objections, you know, wait, how are you going to get them over there? I said, I don't know. They said, well, who's going to bring them over? I said, well, I think I'll bring them over. I said, well, when are you going to take time off work? So I said, I have no idea when I'm going, but, but this is it. So I think everyone saw how determined I was. They saw that I had a dream. They didn't care about the plan. And they went over and they put my name on those Macs and said, Matt, you know what? We're going to help you. How are we going to get them to Africa? So the story was interesting for me. Over the next six months, uh, we were able to raise $5,600 through helps of friend and family and people on Twitter. Um, I traveled to Africa with 10 IMAX. Uh, it was 240 pounds of luggage in five lampshade boxes. So you can imagine across five airports, I was dragging these computer boxes with lampshades, so people wouldn't know what they were, uh, through airport to airport and actually brought them uh, to the middle of Africa. So when I was in Kenya, I sat there and I went, wow. This is, uh, this is pretty incredible. I'm there by myself in the middle of nowhere, and I learned, I le learned a lot of really interesting lessons. Um, some of the things I learned came from a little boy named Martin. Now, Martin was a 10-year-old boy. He arrived at the open arms village that I went to on the same day that I did with the computers. Um, Martin had never uh, had any opportunity for education in his life. Um, I got to show Martin how to move a mouse around the screen and see a little arrow move on the top of the screen. By the time I was gone, Martin was learning his, his alphabet. He was learning basic math through some of the programs we were doing. It was absolutely mind-blowing. It's amazing what people are capable of when given the same opportunities. The other lesson that I learned is what I was capable of. So I took, for once in my life, I took an idea that I had and I didn't spend all my energy up here trying to figure it out. I immediately put all my energy down here to making it happen. So what did I do when I came back? I started to apply these same lessons that I had from Africa to my social life and to my business life. I started to go to events. I found things like Sprout Up. I found things like Social Media Breakfast that we talked about. I found things like Gen Y Ottawa. And I didn't think about what am I going to say, who am I going to meet, how many business cards do I have. I just said, I'm just going to go and see what happens. So I started to do these events. I started meeting people from Twitter. I started meeting people at the events. 
And for the first time in my life, I started to really feel connected to a community. So what did I do after that? I left. <laughs> I left Ottawa, and I came to Kitchener. Thank you. <laughs> and when I came to Kitchener, you know, it was amazing. I've been to Kitchener just over a year now. And it was incredible how many amazing people I met. I used the same philosophy. I went to those same events I found here in Kitchener. I talked to people on Twitter. And there was a couple people that made this transition. I, it was unbelievable how easy it was for me to move from, from Ottawa uh, to Kitchener. Um, the two people I want to talk about are in this room right now. Um, one of them, if you've ever searched for real estate in Kitchener, you'll think this guy's spamming all of Google. Uh, Benjamin Bach, when I came down here, I looked up Ben. They, give an applause for you. Um, so when I came down here, I was looking for, for condos, and I searched, and I found Ben, and I went, oh, wow, this guy's all over this. And I called him, and I sat down, and Ben has been so instrumental in introducing me to people when I got down here. Um, most of the connections I've made have been in one way, shape, or another from Ben introducing. The other person is also here, and when I went out to events, I'm very... Uh, shy person sometimes. I had trouble getting out and you know talking to people at these events. And Lisa McDonald, who's here right now, you guys know, is pro probably the best height to noise ratio of anyone on the planet. Lisa would drag me around these events, introducing me to one person after the next, after the next, after the next. And those two people in particular were, uh, made me feel a part of this community, made me feel welcome when I got here. Um, for me, the big lesson that I learned and one that I've applied through social media and learned through social media was take that energy that you have up here and transfer it down here. I've taken on a kind of a new personal life motto and that is to think less and move more. And I think for everyone here in this room, I think it's a great opportunity to learn from that Go out, do whatever you want to do. Live your dreams. Don't think about the plan. Don't worry about how you're going to get there. Just get out there and do it. Um, this has been an incredible opportunity here at 140. Um, I'm shocked that you know a year into this, uh, I'm getting a chance to speak at such an awesome event like this. Uh, thank you, everyone, for coming out. And uh, thank you. Thank you, Matt. What a great story.